So, I think we are ready and I am really glad to welcome you all here to, let me say, our living room. And if you are here, you are investing your time. Maybe it is because you want to know how and why photobiomodulation could play a role in the scenario of AMD treatment. So first of all, I want to thank you all for your presence and I will try to give my best not to be boring. And I am here to unveil our preliminary results of our ongoing multicentric uh, clinical trial named LightWave 1. We all know that age-related macular degeneration is the leading cause of visual loss in the developed country and also the third cause of visual loss worldwide. So we should keep in mind that we are talking about a retinal disease with an important impact on our societies. There are three different stages of AMD. There is the early AMD, the intermediate AMD, and then we have the advanced AMD that consists of the atrophic form and the neovascular form. So the uh, actual treatments, the recent developed treatments for the advanced AMD uh, include the NTV edge, edge treatment for the neovascular form or also the complement inhibitors injection for the atrophic form. But if you think about it, if we wait for the advanced form to occur, maybe it's too late. So an ideal treatment and uh, the best treatment for our AMD patient would be in the intermediate form rather than in the advanced form. But why? Because if we wait for the advanced form to develop, what we see is a central scotomia, an important metamorphopsia, and at this point we can perform every treatment we want, including injection, complement inhibitors, but usually this scotoma only reduces over time, and the same is for uh, uh, metamorphopsia and for the visual loss. Conversely, if we treat our patient in this stage, when we have intermediate AMD, Things are going better because patients usually have a, a good visual acuity, a good contrast sensitivity. So this is the best ideal stage where we should treat our patient. But what can we do nowadays for our patient in this stage? Nowadays, we can only tell them, OK, we have to follow up you every six months because you have a high risk to progress towards the advanced form. And once again, we know that the atrophic form accounts for the 80% of form of AMD. And it has been estimated that about 2,080 million people will be affected by AMD in 2040. So you can better imagine and understand the impact on the society and the burden on the society that these retinal disorders could play in the next few years. But what is the natural course of the Drusen? You all know that patients with Drusen uh, could, um, could have an increase of the Drusen volume over time. Or sometimes, as you can see here, Drusen collapse. But the problem is that once the Drusen collapse, what we see is the onset of the atrophic area. In these interesting papers, some models demonstrated that the risk of progression towards the advanced form uh, is strongly related to the Drusen volume. And in particular, patients with uh, ARETS 1 grade as a possibility to, as a risk to progress over the advanced form at about 5%. But patients with uh, ARETS grade 2 and 3 in these cases, the risk of progression is at about 20%. And if, you, if, patient, if a patient has the uh, RX grade 4 in the other eye, well, the fellow eye has an increased risk at about 30% to develop the atrophic geographic area or the neovascular form. So when we, have, when we are facing a patient with intermediate AMD, the problem is that we only now they can say, I can tell him, okay, you have an increased risk to progress over the advanced form related to the RS grade of Drusen. 
And we know that there is no validated treatment guidelines for patients with intermediate AMD. We can only tell them to modify their risk factors. But let me say that it is something like if we say to a diabetic patient not to eat, so it's not so easy. Or we, we can, if you believe it, we can use the oral supplements according to the evidences coming from the RS2 and uh, RS1 and RS2 studies. But the oral supplements only reduce the risk of progression towards the advanced form of at about 20%. So is there any, anything else that we can do for our patients with intermediate AMD? Then, at this time, we get in the game. If you click the word photobiomodulation on PubMed, you will find, you will find about 2,800 papers coming out, not only about the ophthalmology field, but generally in the medical field. And this is... Why? This is because the photobiomodulation has been proved to be an effective treatment also for other fields of, uh, of medicine, not only in the ophthalmology. But coming back into the ophthalmology field, uh, you should know that the, the, um, the photobiomodulation is also called the low-level light therapy, and it uses a non-coherent light source with a wavelength including uh, between 500 and 1,000. But what happens? Why should the photobiomodulation uh, reduce the risk of progression of AMD or should reduce the increase of drusen volume over time? It has been proved that the photobiomodulation uh, increased the mitochondrial activity, increased the production of the ATP molecules, and then enhances the cellular metabolism and reduces the cell death rate over time. But let's go deeply into our journey and let's see what, what, what are we looking at in our ongoing multicentric clinical trial. You can see here all the centers including. We have several Italian centers, a uh, center from Paris, uh, from Ankara, from UK, and we are collecting cases. You can see uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria, aged more than 50 years, uh, with more than 40 letters at the DRS score, with the, with the grade 2, 3 ARETS, according to the ARETS classification. I also want to draw your attention on the exclusion criteria, because it has been proved that photobiomodulation could cause some problem if we have patients with neurological diseases, including epilepsy, or pregnancy, or herpes infection. So pay attention when you are going to treat this kind of patients. But now let's see in a practical way how this device works. You can see we have a mask producing a light. We have two light, a yellow light with the 590 nanometers. And then we have the, the red light with the 630 nanometers. The, the machine has two cycles. We, in, in our studies, we use two cycles. The cycle one includes eight sessions over four weeks. It means that we do the simulation at, on Monday on Friday for four weeks. And then we repeated the cycle after four months for the cycle two. Here you can see what we were talking about because we have five minutes with eyes closed. And then we have one minute with the eyes opened. And the same is for the red and yellow light. In this, in this image, you can see all the, the imaging that we are doing on uh, these patients. Of course, we measure the best core visual acuity. We perform color, FAF, spectral domain OCT. We perform OCTA, contrast sensitivity, the redness score, and also the microperimetry to see the retinal uh, sensitivity changes over time. You know, in my opinion, in this kind of trials, 
The best correct visual acuity should not be considered the primary outcomes because usually patients with intermediate AMD has, has a good visual acuity. So we are focusing on, as I told you before, on the Drusen volume changes over time and also on the retinal sensitivity evaluated by the microperimetry. I know that you want to see some cases, so we set up two examples of our, of, uh, of our cases from the, our ongoing multicentric trial, and this is the case one. We had a patient aged 68 with a visual acuity of 50 letters. We performed the cycle one treatment, including eight sessions, and then we performed the, the follow-up evaluation at one month and four months. What you can see here, after one month of treatment, is an improve, improving of the visual acuity of five letters. But also I want to draw your attention on this image. You can see this is the line 27, the first line. And you can see a gradual reabsorption of the drusen, not followed by any increase of the backscattering or any atrophic area on set. Here you can see another line, 28 line, and look at here, we can clearly see a Drusen volume reduction over time. Once again, in this other picture, we can see Drusen basal laminar material and we can see how over time the material starts to reduce it without any legacy of atrophy. But I also want to show you another case, a very interesting case, of a patient aged uh, 55 uh, with what we call non-neovascular age-related macular degeneration with subretinal fluid. His visual acuity was very low and uh, it was 25 letters. He complained a lot and um, he visited several centers, but without the, 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 our co my colleagues did not uh, give him any, uh, any treatment. So he decided to come to our clinic and we decided to start a photobiomodulation treatment with a complete cycle one, followed by one stimulation every two weeks. Let's see together what happened. Here we have the patient at baseline. You can see this huge, massive pigment epithelium detachment. And I told you that we call this phenotype non-neovascular AMD. You can also see some drusen that you can better see here. There is the subretinal fluid. So what we demonstrated in this paper is that if you inject this kind of patient with anti-VIGF, or if you wait and see over time, there is only one way, and it is the collapse of this huge PD leaving a, a, an important central uh, atrophy area. On the other end, what we observed after the cycle one and after the bimonthly stimulation, after two months, you can see a gradual lowering of this huge PD without any interaction or rupture or disruption of the retinal pigment epithelium. And what I'm telling you is also proved by the autofluorescence image, you can see here, it, it, it looks pretty healthy, except for some drusen. And also this impressive retinal sensitivity map, we evaluated the retinal sensitivity with the microperimetry. And as you can see, what we saw was a, a, a really interesting improvement of the mean retinal sensitivity from a 7.4 decibel value to a 26.5 mean retinal sensitivity. I can truly tell you that patient was very happy because he visited several colleagues, several ophthalmologists that only told him, I cannot do anything for you because if I inject, there is an increased risk to, to the PD to collapse. If I wait, the risk is almost the same. So he was really happy. He had a, a, an important improvement of the visual acuity to 60 letters. And we, are also treat, we have treated other two cases with the same diagnosis and things are going very well. So in conclusion, I can say and we can say together that maybe in the near future, the phytobiomodulation could represent a new treatment in the scenario of A and D 
especially for intermediate form. And as told before, if we calculate that about 280 million people will be affected uh, by AMD in 2040, I think that you can say together with me that this uh, treatment has a, an important potential value in the management of AMD for our clinic. It could reduce the, the costs related to the management of, of the intravideal injection and also re reduce the burden on the society related to the relatives and family of the affected people. If you want to know more about our ongoing trial, that it is almost concluded, or if you want to join the second multicentric trial, you can scan this QR code. We will evaluate your center and we will be happy to join you on board. Thank you very much for your attention and I will be very happy to answer any question or to make discussion with you.